If a man does not obtain help of God, regardless how zealous, regardless how well intentioned, I can tell you by the mercies of God, even in this work of the ministry, I have seen people with solid character. I've seen people with integrity. But for whatever reason, they did not obtain the requisite help from God. And they still felt like people who were full of compromise. Of Acts and verse 22. Do we have it projected? Okay, so I'll read it from here. And then um, you'll follow carefully. It says, having therefore obtained help of God, I continue unto this day witnessing both to small and great saying none other things than those which the prophets and moses say should come i'm interested in the a part just keep verse 22 it says having therefore obtained help of god i continue unto this day i continue that means god has to help and assist a man to continue and remain god has to help a man to have longevity of impact in life longevity of impact in ministry if a man does not obtain help of god regardless how zealous regardless how well intentioned i can tell you by the mercies of god even in this work of the ministry i have seen people with solid character i've seen people with integrity but for whatever reason they did not obtain the requisite help from god and they still felt like people who were full of compromise i have seen a mystery in my life as a man of god that under a certain condition it seems like both good and bad experience the same result the difference is the help of god over the life of a man the bible says except the lord builds a house it says they labor but they labor in vain that build it except the lord watches over a city are we learning tonight it says the watchman watched but in vain it is vain he says to wake up early in the morning and to sleep late at night only to eat the bread of sorrow but he says god giveth his beloved sleep that if god does not help a man there are times that your intelligence can fail if god does not help a man human connections are important but human connections can be limited if god does not help a man you can have money but you will be surprised at how many things money cannot do if god does not help a man you can have a good sermon and not have anyone interested in listening to you if god does not help a man you can be a man of character but those who have the grace to help you will not even see you it is not of him that willeth nor of him that runneth it is of the lord that showeth mercy who is learning already because we live in a world where it, we live in a celebrity age where people like to take the credit for the exploits they like to take the credit for the many things that happen around their lives there is such an obsession to be a celebrity there is such an obsession to be exceptional and there's nothing wrong in itself with that except that you get to a point in your life where you can believe that the results that you have now produced have come as a result of the vastness of your prayer life the vastness of your word study life because of the accolades that follow you academically in as much as those things are not wrong there is a life that powers those things to work it is called the help of god that without the help of god you can be as sound intellectually as you can be you will still fail in life without the help of god you can be skilled and gifted you will still be ignored without the help of god you can be a man of god fast in scripture and you will be surprised that your life will not go forward you will be surprised that ministry will not go forward there are parents who raise their children in a way that no child should be um, a tragedy after that kind of training and yet almost all the children turn out to be a source of pain it was not lack of discipline and i've seen other people who did not make any investment in their children and god meandered those children to ministries that midwife their training it is not of him that willeth you are Ebenezer, 
the helper of men. You are Ebenezer. Behind the exploits of men, exploits in ministry, behind the exploits of men, exploits in the area of influence, finances, and so on and so forth, I am telling you that there are laws to be obeyed. There are principles to be kept. I agree. But when all is said and done, there is a part of the equation of success that no man can feel. It is only the help of God that becomes the completer of that equation. Hallelujah. I would always say that there are times when you desire to catch fish as a fisherman. If you want to catch fish as a fisherman, the right place to be is the sea. The right tool to use is your net and the boat. But Peter in John chapter 21, being a professional fisherman, had experience correct. Had the boat correct. Had the net correct. Was at the right location correct. But he did not catch fish. There are times all the variables are right and mysteriously you will not know why things are not working it looks to me like sometimes god allows those things to happen deliberately to remind you that he is beyond a principle to remind you that he is beyond a formula principles are powerful but there is an agency beyond them are we learning haven't obtained help from the lord i continue ministry to this day I continue career to this day. We live in a world where we are embarrassed to declare before the nations that God is the reason behind our results. We like to take credit for the things that God wrought through us and sometimes in doing so, we push God out of the space because we make him look like he's a nuisance. We, this celebrity mentality puts us in a position where we want to receive the accolades. If there is anything I have learned about God, is that when you stand his way of receiving glory, even if he's the one that blesses you, or has blessed you to that position, he will fight you. God can fight something he once gave you. Because of the way you and that thing has interrupted him from being seen. Just because God gave you something does not mean it cannot become his enemy. The enemy of God is anyone and anything that perpetually becomes an interruption to his being glorified. That can be your gift. That can even be your church. God can fight good things. He does not only fight evil. God can fight good things. If they become an interruption to his being glorified, he will fight it. Let me tell you the truth. There are many people's decline in life that is not entirely demonic. They made up their minds to take the place of God. In Deuteronomy chapter 8, he began to caution the nation of Israel and he says, let it not be that when you have built houses, let it not be that when all of these wonderful things have happened, you will say in your heart, my power and the might of my hand has gotten me these riches. Then it says, thou shalt remember the Lord your God. You see, look at me, beloved. Something happens to believers when we step into the realm of success. It makes a lot of sense to seek God when you are failing. It makes a lot of sense to cry and fast and pray when things are not working. It makes a lot of sense to give when you are hoping that you will rise. But there is a weakness in men. Please follow carefully. We are going somewhere. There is a weakness in men when they step into a realm of results. Something happens to them. The Bible says they can forget. They do not forget because they are evil. They forget because they are human. Hallelujah. It is easy to make all kinds of vows and covenants with God. Lord, if you lift me, I promise that the nations will see me. If you prosper me, prosper my children, make all things to work well for me. But something, there, there seems to be a weakness in all men. That if God does not help you to tame that weakness, it can cut short your impact. So when men begin to rise... When convenience begins to come into your life, when God begins to give you a name, 
as a man of God, when God multiplies your voice, amplifies your impact, gradually is a subtle indoctrination. It doesn't happen in one day. It's a programming. It's, it's, a, it's, it's like a seduction that happens to you. You begin to convince yourself that honestly, without me, God's program cannot go forward. You begin to convince yourself it is at that point you become an enemy of God. Because if there is anything I know about God, He's passionate about being revealed and glorified in the world of men. And if anyone becomes an interruption to that agenda, I assure you, you become an enemy of the cross. Are we together? So to remind you that if you celebrate 40 years of impact and you watch a matriarch like our mother still walking in humility and giving God praise after 40 years, it is worthy of commendation. There are people who cannot last two years of experiencing results. It becomes a cost to them. The reason why God does not seem to answer the prayer of many people is not because his hands cannot be stretched. You have been weighed in the spirit and God has seen that lifting you will become a cost to you. So he will rather peg your growth until he prunes the tendencies of pride, until he prunes the tendencies of taking his place. Who is learning tonight? It is true. Let me tell you this. As a secret, by the mercies of God, I understand a few things about prayer. Every time you pray on an issue again and again and you bind, you cast, you do everything, people agree with you and that situation does not change. It is not demonic again. There is something in you that needs to be corrected for the answer. Maybe this is a word for someone. You have given, you did not increase. You were diligent, you did not increase. Oil was laid on you, hands were laid on you. Stop casting the devil. Go back to God. And say walk on me that weakness you are taming by my delay walk on me so that it will give me liberty are we together it is true it is God that knows the tendencies that are enshrined within our hearts and he must there is a posture that a believer must carry perpetually to last now I show you a secret and then we'll pray I want to show you one of the ways that God helps men. The psalmist said, I will lift up my eyes onto the hills. And then he says, from whence cometh my help? He says, my help, not our help. I don't know where yours comes from, but my help cometh from the Lord, the maker of the heavens and the earth. Let me show you a mystery. This mystery has been responsible for the longevity of many people in ministry, in business, in career. And I'm praying for you in the name of Jesus that God will open your eyes. That you will engage this mystery for your profiting and that for the rest of your life. You believe that? Shout a loud amen. amen. 